Here we go. I got Sabu over my shoulder now. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Let's do this. What the fuck is up, Carnival Spirits? It's TJ and Panic17 back on YouTube to do another video for y'all. Today we're going to speculate on the Marvelous Missing Link found track list. I should have already done this, but I'm pulling up the track list. I've got it right in front of me. Uh, it has an intro. The first actual song title, which is track two, is the subtitle track. It's found, but that's no surprise because the first track of the Marvelous Missing Link Lost album is called Lost. So we're getting our title tracks right off the jump. It's going to start off in a similar fashion. They're going to describe uh, the scenario of being found. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be, you know, the first two tracks are probably going to be the same thing, just in the version of Found and the lyrics were Found. So it's, it's, all about, it's all about finding faith, you know? Yeah. That's what Jump Steady said in the first one. Don't live your life and die without knowing what it's like to find faith in something. And they don't specify what it is, so it's open to consideration or whatever well there's a there's a wide dragnet here i mean we're talking about keeping people happy and there is no one solution for happiness uh violent jay said in interviews that he understands why people cling to religion for hope and i think he's just acknowledging that people find hope in all sorts of different areas of life not just organized religion. I mean, if you listen to ICP, you know where they stand on evangelical churches. They're not religious. I mean, they're very spiritual. There's a huge difference. When they're talking about finding faith, well, you're talking about some spirituality there. And that's a completely different conversation than being religious. I think people get that confused all the time. Most juggalos I know are not religious, not even the ones that believe in God. They're very spiritual, but they don't really fuck with modern mainstream religion. And there's a lot of religions out there. Some of them were raised in very strict religious households, and because of that tight grip religion held on their lives, they broke away from it. And maybe they're feeling like they found their missing link in something else, like science. That is true. I would say 70 to 80% of the people that grew up in uh, very religious homes went to the catechism. I don't know what they call it anywhere else. You know, they go to the church, they do the schooling after church, and they do the Holy First Communion for Christians. I've had friends who did that. They don't mess with religion no more. They actually take a pretty strong stance, like, against it, and not like... Uh, like they hate it, but just question it. You know what I mean? A lot of them question it heavily now. They grew up like that. And then you want to break it down into Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. I mean, I'm surprised they haven't come out with a, with a fucking prequel yet. You know? <laughs> uh, I think it's kind of like Hunter Valentine says, you just need to have faith in something. Because without faith, you're fucking, you're lost, man. People that don't have faith are miserable. He says you got to believe in something. You got to believe. believe you got to believe in something. Believe in fuck. You know, believe in something yourself. And it's very easy to get lost, especially nowadays with social media and people that don't talk. So uh, before we go too far, what's uh, what are we on track three? Uh, get where, clown. Where, what what is it? Uh, track three is called Get Clowned. Get Clowned. Shit. I, I think that's pretty much self-explanatory. They're going to, you know, just talk about people, clowning on people. You know, I think, it, and we've talked about this before, ICP are the type of guys that, let's say there's a guy that comes up and he's 
he's buff and he got the model chick and he gets out of his million dollar truck and ICP are the type of guys, look at this fucking nerd ass motherfucker, you know, even though he's the coolest guy around, ICP are like, you know what, this guy's a fucking nerd, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I can I see that. Be something like that. I'm, I'm skipping ahead with my eyes, you know, uh, they all give me a sense of, uh, of fun, confidence, you know, shenanigans, uh, but track four is simply okay. Okay is a lot better than not okay. I think that's going to be a track with, uh, what's that guy, Little John. He's going to be like, okay. <laughs> <coughs> and what else do you say? What? So, okay with Little John. No, I think uh, I think it's going to be about how they're okay now, you know. Because obviously when they grew up, they had a lot of problems. Not yeah. only men, you know, as far as money, maybe mentality, they didn't feel good about themselves. You know, as far as money and probably feeling about themselves, they probably feel good or okay. I'd say a lot of their music has um, described the type of personality that would feel depressed, reclusive, cut off from the world, manic depressive, the last song of the, of the, of, uh, the fucking Hell's Pit. Yeah. Yeah, to be okay is, is uh, playing it down, you know, it, especially compared to the intro of Juggalo Party where Shaggy is just like fucking stupendous with wings on his feet, shining like a motherfucker, can't get the bitches off his dick. To be just okay, let me tell you, man, after struggling, after being uh, through hell and back, to be okay is a fucking hell of a good place to be, you know? So I bet <laughs> that there's going to be some sort of uh, profound uh, expression of just being okay. You know what's funny is that whenever I first listened, you know, Bizarre came out, and they did Behind the Paint, they were still going through shit, even though that's when they started taking off. You cannot write a song like that unless you really feel it. I mean, I, that's what I kind of feel like. They still realized that they were scrubs, and maybe now, you know, they're like, you know what, we used to be scrubs, but we kind of are, but we've done something. We're good now. Moving on to number five, Lost at the Carnival. It's kind of along the same lines. I want to say that I think that they found ways to kind of uh, hark to the opposite album. You know, in The Wraith, you had Hell's Forecast, right? Yeah. And then on Hell's Pit, you know, you had... Uh, Bowling balls, which is kind of like the happy-go-lucky. I'm I'm a lunatic and I'm happy in my fucking crazy ways where I collect everybody's heads. You know what I mean? That was a fun song on a very negative album. But so specifically on the Marvelous Missing Link, I think that on the Lost album, that song, uh, the fuck is it called? How do I know? If, uh, is it called how? how? Yeah, I think it's how. All right. I think how is kind of like that song that spells it out for you that there's a struggle, a want to be found. You know what I mean? Like, how do I, how do I know, how do I make it into Shangri-La when it's just so fucking hard? Like, you know, it's, this isn't a negative track at all. It's a very positive track because it's about that struggle, you know, to do right in the world. So I'm thinking that Lost at the Carnival might be a similar type of uh, excuse to go negative. Because if you're lost at the Carnival, uh, that could be a huge metaphor for, for life and having no direction and having, you know, you don't know what your attraction is going to be and how it's going to turn you on and light you up, fill your life, you know what I mean, with wonder and amazement like the fucking Carnival does. It's very clever to say the least. I don't think ICP makes songs about the fucking carnival unless they're talking about their interpretation of 
the dark carnival, which used to be the dead carnival in the early liner notes. <laughs> it's that, funny how things have changed over the years. I don't know. Yeah, what, do you, it, what do you think, man? Lost at the carnival. Is this going to be like, you know, Jay's a 14-year-old kid, and there's the bearded lady, and there's, uh, you know. I'm not going to lie. I would kind of like, I would like to hear your version better, you know, metaphorically being lost in a carnival or whatever. But then you got Willow like, Rags, and he's like, yo, I fucked your mother the other night. You know, come on and get in here. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, metaphorically, you know, mentally being lost. But what would be cool is, like you say, the cartoonish being lost at the carnival. You know, a little story going, you know, maybe not even have anything to do with uh, being found or lost, but just like, you know, a little story. They come up with weird stories all the time. I think that would be pretty cool. You know, just go around and whatever, you know. It's, it's, it's hard to tell what the fuck's – because we're going to – say this and then when we hear the album it's going to be totally something fucking different well that's what that's why we're calling this a speculation video and we're doing this for y'all out there because i know y'all like to speculate as well anyways we're gonna move on number six mr white suit what do you think i kind of think about something kind of like the wraith like an entity or some shit i'll tell you what i'm thinking of I'm thinking of Heisenberg, bitch. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You know what I'm actually thinking of? Is Morgan Friedman in a white fucking suit. Didn't he play God in that Jim Carrey movie? You know, I think I was just thinking. Actually, I was thinking about a... Oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was thinking about Little Nicky, but it, there, it's chicks that play God. But yeah, yeah no, I think you're right. No, 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 no. They just play angels, dude. They're just angels. Right. <laughs> I haven't watched that movie in a while. That movie's fucking hilarious. But anyways, yeah. um, no, I'm talking about Bruce Almighty, where Jim Carrey uh, meets God, and it's fucking Morgan Freeman wearing a right. white outfit. But, yeah, so Mr. White Suit could be uh, a song about the man, the man in white. Or it could be about Fred, who makes the donuts. Time to make the donuts. You know what I mean? Who knows who Mr. White Suit is? Maybe Mr. White Suit is the American psycho or something. Or, um, I don't know, who else wears white? Astronauts? Um, fucking tennis players? No, that's not, it would be a suit. Look, the color white. The color white. The absence of color. Whatever the fuck you want to call white. I hate getting... Uh, I I don't like white sneakers because they get dirty so fast. And I see motherfuckers, <laughs> like, you know, bugging out over how, like, oh, I got a scuff on my fucking shoes. And, you know, and their fucking shoes are white. And life is dirty. And you're walking around in this mess of a world worrying about your fucking white sneakers getting scuffed. And especially when you got like a dozen pair of sneakers at home and half of them are all white and they all cost <laughs> over a hundred dollars a piece. That right there is a mental disorder. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, that's like internet addiction. That shit ain't right. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Mr. White suit is a fucking sociopath. You know what I mean? <laughs> like Mr. Happy. A murder, murder, murder you. <laughs> Mr. White Suit is either going to be good or bad, okay? There's, it's one or the other, people. This is found, not lost. So my guess, my first initial guess, is that Mr. White Suit is going to be some sort of, like, positive figure. Yeah. I, I think that sounds about right. Something good. It only makes sense. Maybe it's like a two dope solo track, in which case Shaggy is Mr. White Suit. Maybe he's taking on a new name, and therefore that completely turns the assumptions on its head. Maybe Mr. White Suit is out on the town at Vegas. You know, this is found, so he's living it up. You know? 
all these songs could be different versions of the same fucking idea, and that's Juggalo Party. You know, the next song, track seven, is Pineapple Pizza. Uh, Pineapple Pizza. So this is going to be a fat kid anthem, or this is going to be like just a, a splurge, and, and is this a weed metaphor that I don't know about? Is Pineapple Pizza what the kids today are calling bath salts or something? <laughs> First of all, why in the fuck would you put pineapple on a pizza? You're going to put fruit on a pizza. What the Oh, fuck? you don't know? Oh, I'm being facetious over here for the sake of the channel. Panic. Pineapple and ham on a pizza is a Hawaiian pizza, brother. That's disgusting. No, it isn't. It's fucking delicious. You've never oh, had geez. a Hawaiian pizza? Oh, all right. Look. No, are you, you got to be kidding me. This is probably the greatest thing ICP has ever. If you no. don't know how good a, a, a Hawaiian pizza is, then this song, I hope, is going to open the doors for you. They're oh, probably God. like, we never thought of doing it either. And then one day, someone gave me a slice, and there was pineapple on my pizza, and it was the shit. Violent J is the type of fatso. Uh, he's the type <laughs> of fatso. <laughs> you know, oh, he, he would he'd be like, I got to make an album about heaven. Well, obviously, there's lots of pineapple pizza in heaven, so that's going to be track number seven. <laughs> oh, man. I, I can't do it. Pineapple pizza? No. That sounds horrible. I'm pretty normal. I don't, you know, I don't fuck with pineapples or fucking olives or fucking vegetables. Or... I'm more of a... Hold on, pepperoni. Hold, on. hold the fuck on, dude. Did you just say you just compared pineapple to a bunch of tasteless vegetables? Pineapple is a fruit. It's delicious. It's exactly. Sweet. That's why I don't go on a pizza. What the fuck? You don't know, man. I mean, why would you put an onion on a pizza or a red pepper or exactly. even? Exactly. That's disgusting. No, dude, it's delicious. Are you oh. fucking kidding me? Come on. You won't put weird shit on your pizza. Like, I'll draw a line at sardines, although it's not – I understand if you like that taste, but I don't like the taste of sardines on my fucking pizza. Are you telling me that a delicious pineapple on your pizza is going to fuck that up for you? Yeah, I won't even touch it. And you also are not feeling – the new ICP single Juggalo Party. Now I'm starting to understand you more, man. You're no fucking fun. You don't put pineapple on your pizza. This no, is the I... defining track of the album, which basically <laughs> defines if you are a Juggalo or not. Do you or do you not put pineapple on your pizza? You don't? No. Nope. You ain't a ninja. Then I'm not a ninja. Because look, man, I mean, that's fucking pineapple on a pizza. God damn it. I can't believe that exists. Pepperoni, you know, with some extra sauce, maybe some bacon or Canadian bacon, and that's it. Everything that you've described is fucking meat, okay? I get it. You're a carnivore. But have a vegetable and a fruit once in a while, man. It ain't going to hurt you. And you'd be damn surprised how delicious pineapple pizza can be. Have you ever been to Hawaii? They put flowers in their hair. They do the hula dance. They light tiki torches, and they put pineapple on their pizza. Are you telling me that they don't know how to live in a tropical paradise? Because that's what the fuck I'm talking about. And I think that that's where this song needs to... If this song doesn't have anything to do with a tropical paradise and the most delicious combination of cheese and fruit, then I'm dropping the hatchet. <laughs> I, I already did. I Pineapple pizza, I can't, I can't mess with them no more. I don't think I can be friends with you anymore. We need to move on to fucking track yeah. number eight. Oh, great. Track number eight. Track number eight, Juggalo Party. Panic, please. Tell us how you feel about this as I lose faith. Uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Go ahead. I, I, don't know, I just wasn't feeling it, you know? No, I kidding. heard the sample, so, you know, big Irish juggalos. I give it a chance. And, All right, I'll wait till the full track comes out and, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it. The beat's all right. The beat's okay. Is, yeah, it the, is the beat okay? I mean, the beat it's to right. me 
sounds like a car commercial. So, or, you know, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm picturing a bunch of juggalos dancing around in a white background because the theme is white, right? You got Mr. White Pants, and then you got fucking the white backdrop of the Joker's card on the album instead of black, which uh, is, is a distinct difference. But it's not like they haven't been playing with colors before, right? Yeah. For the, for the Mighty Death Pop, you had your black pop, the red pop, your white pop. You know, bang, pow, boom, same concept. You got your green boom and your red pow and your blue bang. I saw people complaining about it being white and said that it needed to be black. What the f Why does this matter? I'm pretty sure Scary Gary expressed that he just loves the way that the Joker's cards look on the black background. And it's like, it, look, it's little things like that. The packaging and all, every detail is kind of like uh, a treat, you know, when you when you get it, pulling that slip case off of the jewel case and the, the cardboard, you know, the black background. It, it makes a huge impression. Uh, when the Wraith came out, that shit was all white and baby blue. You know what I mean? We were – it, it, it's raining diamonds, so it's all about that transparency and that blinding shine, and that's what they're doing here with, with Founds. White fucking sleeves, um, white backdrop, Mr. White panties. And uh, in the Juggalo party, I'm imagining, you know, at the end of that movie, this is the end. Except instead of the Backstreet Boys jamming out, imagine if it was an ICP concert. That basically would be the shit. <laughs> if you died and went to heaven and it was a God fucking clown show. For eternity, a Fago Armageddon for for infinity? Are you kidding me? I can't wait to die. <laughs> All right, <laughs> but while we're on Earth, it would be nice to have a good time for the short time that we're together, and that's what I feel Juggalo Party is all about. If I call up my homie and he's feeling that fucking good, if he sounds as half as good as Shaggy sounds on that fucking skit, then. Uh, that shit's contagious. And let's be honest, man, not, not everybody has that in their life. A lot of motherfuckers nope. are negative as fuck, and all their fucking family and support system are just as fucking selfish, not fucking supportive, not friendly. There is a juggalo subculture that likes to party. Juggalo party really is just that one fucking sneak peek. Uh, you know that vomit does not even remotely represent that entire album. Vomit's just yeah. one song. You know this, you know? And that brings us to track nine, which is called The Midway. And I don't know why that seems ironically relevant, but The Midway could be a song about purgatory. But perhaps. Yeah. I could go with that. Because honestly, before, I didn't, I had no fucking clue what to even think about it, but I can see that. Is a midway um, traffic term? Is that like, uh, you know, like a highway? Like a passageway? Is, is that what a midway is? I'm really not too sure. Because maybe it's about getting roadhead or fucking bitches at truck stops. <clears throat> Honestly, to what I really think about midway on um, PS one or two, Mortal Kombat trilogy was made by Midway, so that's <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Basically, uh, <clears throat> it's about video games. Yeah, I think it'd be about the new Mortal Kombat. Game. No, to, <laughs> to me, it sounds like it's a name of a place. You know, like ICP always had uh, spots. You know, Clark Park, or they always mentioned certain streets and. I feel like the midway is a place and maybe it's the location of something happening. They're going to tell a story that happened at the midway, you know? So we we're only halfway done. Well, we're more than halfway done. Uh, track 10. I fucked a cop. It, de <laughs> I guess it depends how you take it. You could see as like you whipped the cop's ass or you fucked the cop and literally fucked the cop. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the uh, B. 
literally fucked a cop because the title of the track is I fucked a cop. And let me tell you what comes to mind for me. It's the second to last song on the red hot chili peppers, blood sugar, sex magic album called sir psycho sexy. Uh, in that song, Anthony Kiedis has a whole verse about getting pulled over by a hot female cop. It's a whole fucking verse that describes him getting it on with this hot officer of the law. And it's, it's the best song ever. It fucking jams out. It's like psychedelic. And uh, it's like basically the album closer. You know what I mean? Right. I fucking love that song. I actually wanted to cover that song. I still might do it, actually. <laughs> uh, it's a fucking great song. It's fun to rap. Because in a way, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, he kind of rapped a lot of his songs. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, anyways, I fucked a cop. I can't wait to hear uh, Violent J and Shaggy talking about fucking a cop. This might be the Shaggy solo too dope. <laughs> you yeah, know, I, I could I could see Shaggy doing doing this one. I mean, first he's getting pulled over. This is on the Found album, man. I'm looking at this like maybe it's a it's a feel good song, like maybe. It, like just like the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, you get pulled over, and then what? What? She's hot, and I'm gonna get her pussy wet, get me out of getting a ticket or going to jail. Fucking tag that shit, and send her home with uh, I don't know, with my license and registration, so she can call me later. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, I heard that this is gonna be the opposite of a wicked shit album. This is going to be a feel good party album. So yeah, I forget about that. You know, maybe this fucking hot cop shows up at a kegger at a juggalo party at the midway, you know, Mr. White suits doing a keg stand. And so this, this cop shows up, but uh Oh, she's not a cop at all. She rips off her clothes and it's a stripper. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, the title could be misleading. Maybe she's a stripper. Maybe she's a dude. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like Aerosmith and dude looks like a lady. <laughs> well. <laughs> Maybe it's fucking Caitlin dressed as a cop. <laughs> God damn it. We need to go to the next song. All right. Track 11. The world is yours. I'm curious about this because this could be an original song or maybe it's a Nas cover. Wouldn't that be fucking unreal? That'd be pretty dope. I mean, Nas is considered one of the greatest rappers of all time, depending on who you talk to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But the world is yours, uh, comes from Scarface and is written on the blimp, you know? Well, um, Al Pacino, Tony Montana, it's fucking rising from being a nobody to being the number one. Say hello to my little friends. You know, got all the cocaine, all the money, all the girls, all the power. The world is yours. You know what I'm saying? That movie inspired tons of fucking hip hop too. So yep. for ICP to be basically tackling one of the most mainstream, it's this concept of you know, you're a rapper and the world is yours. Except I don't think it's going to go in that direction because ICP is always speaking for that every scrub, you know, that ninja out there who is probably dealing with depression. If you can make a song that empowers a motherfucker to make them feel like the world is theirs, well, you might be brainwashed, but at least it's doing a positive thing in, in your life. You know what I mean? So yeah. sorry, sorry and shit. If you, if you are in fact brainwashed by ICP and you're just a sheep and it's just a phase at least it's a positive phase it's better than going out and fucking robbing motherfuckers and you know and if you're doing that too then you know you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself you know what I mean the world is yours but you're still going to get shot because everyone's out there like the wild wild west you know <laughs> Right. He's got that line. You're gonna get your. You're gonna get your fucking face stomped. You run your mouth on the internet and talk shit about me and my family. And I'm gonna show up at your door. Just kidding. 
You know what I mean? That that's that's what everyone else is talking tough on the internet. They're feeling their oats. <laughs> mm. Anyway, uh, track twelve, Dreams of Grandeur. Well, well, well. What do you think, Panic? Dreams of Grandeur. I think it's going to sound like exactly what it's representing. And re I don't know why, but the fact that they put grandeur on a title really, I'm like, whoa. Really? I don't know why. You know what I mean? Because usually they're simple, I guess. And they, you know, some people may not understand what that means. Well, one could argue that uh, if you know nothing about the world, and ICP's music was your only education in life, then you're going to be an upstanding citizen and you're going to have uh, a good understanding of karma. You're going, to, uh, you're going to follow the ideology of the lore of the Dark Carnival and wait upon the wagons to bring you to the Echo side, to be judged by Jake and Jack Jekyll. There's plenty of uh, hokey things out there to fucking follow, you know? Some people follow Star Trek and actually learn the Klingon language, you know what I'm saying? There's a whole dictionary on that shit. And there's a lot of fan fiction where people get very uh, over-involved in the fantasy realm of this shit. Dreams of Grandeur is going to go off on some joke-your-mind type shit, you know what I mean? It's not physical, it's all in your fucking head. And having dreams of grandeur. If it wasn't for Star Wars, I don't even know if I'd know what that word meant. But Han Solo, it came up, you know what I mean? Him and Leia were fighting. <laughs> so, so anyways, like, you know, I, I like rap. I like vocabulary words. There's some fucking $20 words in my fucking album. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Mm. I don't know. What do you think? Got anything else for Dreams of Grandeur? Otherwise, we got two more tracks. Mm, no, I think we're good. All right. Track Lucky 13, I'm Sweet. Yeah. I'm sweet, too. I'm so sweet. No, I, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's their language, you know? That's the fucking, that's the lexicon of being a juggalo. Shit's fresh, shit's stale. I'm feeling sweet, you know? I, I don't think it is a literal translation. Like, I've been dipped in candy paint, and if you lick no. me, we, I think it's more of an internalized, like, I'm fresh, you know? Like that Legs Diamond song. I'm, I'm so fresh, I'm jealous of myself, like Hold 187 them, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh... I don't know about how they are, but whenever I feel like, hell yeah, is when I got a good fucking high going on. You know, I'm blazed. I'm not even, I'm not worried about what anybody else, you know. Oh, everybody's talking at work and they're not saying shit to me. I'm blazed. I don't give a fuck what y'all are saying, you know. It could be something like that. I don't really know. Maybe not like a, party type not really party type song but i guess just like blazed high but then they don't really do that so you know i don't know probably not it's hard to tell man but it is almost towards the end so it's got to be something good all right well how about putting uh them in junk petition <laughs> i'm making words up here let's put them next to someone who's not sweet all right this could be an opportunity to once again put a microscope on human behavior and be like, we got this sorry son of a bitch over here. We got this fucking negative Nancy over here. We got this fucking eager to please jabber jaw over here. And then I'm over here fucking, I'm just sweet. You know, I got nothing can phase me, you know, like total fucking immunity from, from outside bullshit. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you mean. See, it's kind of like, like at my work, a lot of people trip over some stupid shit, man. 
like uh, a boss will come and they're oh my god they start running around and do getting up i'm i'm always just chilling like i don't give a fuck who's this guy okay he got to rank but i don't give a fuck if you do your job right you know if you got if you're good you know not to make this into work but if you're good you ain't got shit to worry about you know you're just chilling i'm not worrying about this fucking guy that's gonna come in and judge everybody yeah good call dude well the last track on this album is called time and i don't think i need to tell you guys but i'm going to that i love this track title for some reason i've got blind faith in icp to fucking make a powerful album with a grand slam finale and violent j has no pun intended but time and time again proven that he's got these thoughts in his head in the way that he puts those thoughts to music a lot of times is magical so this makes me think of uh like the last song of dark lotus the opaque brotherhood with uh withered you know time's always ticking moving on that that song is fucking beautiful um even that other Dark Lotus song that was on, uh, wasn't it Psychopathics from Outer Space Volume 3, I think? Farther and Farther Away. Uh, oh. Farther oh. and Farther Away. And they're like talking about the never-ending story and the nothing, and it, there's some shit in there about time. <laughs> no. It, it may have to do with like, how time affects you as a person, you know, because we don't, I'm not thinking right now the way I was at 20 or whatever, you know, as you get older, your thinking changes, you, uh, you change it, you know, to your appropriate age and whatever the fuck. I guess you could say I'm uh, a lot more logical in my thinking than I was at 20 or whatever. I realize more shit. I realize whatever I do can affect my dad or you know shit like that so i think it might be a deep song kind of like that because they're what he's 42. he's gonna be 50 you know he's getting up there he's getting older so time is something that he knows that you don't he don't have too much of he has a lot but you know not as much as he as much as he once did what about the last joker's card in the in the tight in the final track off of that album which we have yet to cover on the mighty death podcast but talking about forever and they even made a music video for that showing people aging you know i i remember on the tempest on the last song if i were a serial killer that album came out that was like the first album to come out after the six jokers card had concluded you know hell's pit was over the wraith was over completely and everyone wanted to know what was coming next and they're talking about the tempest they're talking about the storm you know so of course they had the calm before the storm and people were let down by that because nothing could fucking be better than that grand finale of the six jokers card and just everything that was put into that it's like no matter what icp did they could never fucking outdo themselves in that regard but honestly, The Tempest was such an important album. You know, they kind of announced that they were back and that they were never going to go away. If you listen to that song and you just imagine all the juggalos out there not knowing what the future of ICP was going to hold, because this is before they announced the return of the Dark Carnival. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, like, I got in around Jackal Brothers. And, you know, you're doing your homework, you're finding out, and then you're like, Oh, fuck. You know, I got in, and this is what I really thought. I've always said, I thought that whenever I got into it, it was too late, you know, Hell's Pit and the Wraith were going to come out, and that's it. You know, who knows what the fuck's going to happen. They're probably done. So whenever you heard about that album, you're like, oh, shit, they're not fucking done. They're still, you know, they're still going. Um. I suppose it's easy for a motherfucker out there to, you know, to listen to some new shit and be like, yeah, I'm not feeling it. And I've been listening to them for a long time. But I think 
the common thread that a lot of juggalos I know have is that they're all very appreciative that their favorite band is still making music. We all have a really fun time at the shows and it's kind of created a, this like counterculture where, you know, we come together and barbecue and party and we're talking about some really good motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying? So the internet involves a wider spectrum of fucking people and, and the people that are criticizing the album and the song before it comes out, like, you know, judging shit, by its cover, listening to one song and and feeling the need to fucking troll everybody else. I feel like those are the motherfuckers that are lost. Because if you're found, you don't care. You don't care. You don't care what other people think. To be truly at peace with yourself, you're not gonna you're not gonna fucking need to fucking come out and fucking shit on somebody else for any reason whatsoever. And I really give two fucks, you know, you know, we just broke down these track listings and, uh, you know, it's all speculation. I can't wait to hear this album with my own ears and we're going to bring you guys another hangout, invite the rest of the gang in here and we're going to chop it up, break it down and fuck it all up all over again here on Carnival Spirits. Yay. Yay. Yep. I mean, I was pretty much the, uh, you know, I heard Juggalo Party, and almost right away, I was like, man, I lost hope for this fucking album. And, you know, I told y'all, y'all know, I don't know how much other people knew, but I was like, man. But now that I really have time to fucking sit down and think about it, it's like, you know what? Vomit really didn't have too much to do with the album after all. You know, it was like, honestly, I skip over that song now. That's what Juggalo Party could be. It could not even be that good of a representative of like how the album's gonna sound. So of course I was gonna get it, you know. I can't sit at home knowing that the album was out and not get it. <laughs> nope, dropping the hatchet. Don't want to party. <laughs> nope, nope. Don't want to do it. Listen, much love to everybody out there. If you're at the gathering. You are a hell of a lot more blessed than I am. I'm very jelly. Uh, I think I'm going to uh, post a slideshow of all my picks from the 2001 gathering soon uh, here on Carnival Spirits. I've been meaning to do that for years. I got mad pictures from the second annual gathering because my buddy is a professional photographer, and he took 30 rolls of film, developed them all, and shared copies with me. 30 rolls of film at the 2001 Holy shit. I got mad pictures. And so I want to share them with you guys. And I will have to censor some of them because some of those juggalette contests got freaky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I want to make one big slideshow video and include music in it. Right. But I'll try to include the music that was going on at that time. Uh, but yeah, my alarm just went off. I actually got to go now. I got to work. So I got to scram. Yeah, so I'm going to end this shit. Panic, got any last words? Uh, no, that's it, man. All right. Everyone check out our website, carnivalspirits.com. Always remember to fuck the fuck off. See ya.